My name is Bill Bowers, and I am an actor and a mime. Uh, I live in New York City and have made my living there as a performer and teacher for the past 25 or so years. Chest, shoulder, neck. And that has allowed me to come to uh, the university and teach a class in movement for the theater and dance department, and also to be at the helm of creating a new uh, theater piece called Heyoka Hokehe. Hey Yokas, remind us, there's always more than one way to see things. They remind us to laugh. Hey Yokas are different windows from which to view the world. This play has one of the strangest names, Heyoka Hokehe. Those, uh, those are two separate words from the Lakota language, the Lakota Sioux language. And I was attracted to Heyoka because I've been reading uh, and studying for a number of years the idea of how those who are different are treated in society through different cultures throughout the wor world. And in reading about being different, in reading about uh, the other, I came upon this really fascinating phenomenon from Native America called the contrary clowns. Hey, yokas are the backward, forward, inside out, upside down, contrary clowns. Hey, yokas are our mirrors to the world. The hey, yoka is specific to the Lakota world, and um, hey, yoka translates to mean the one who walks backwards. Hey, yokas were uh, documented to live their lives backwards walking backwards, talking backwards. Some never spoke in words at all. Heyokas uh, wore their clothes inside out, um, crossed genders, men dressed as women, women dressed as men, to remind the community that there is always more than one way to see things. What is a Heyoka? Every human is a twin soul. When a person is born, only one or the other twin comes into being. One twin comes to Earth, the other remains in the spirit world as the higher self. A woman on Earth has a male higher self, a man on Earth has a female higher selves. These two selves influence each other, communicate, stay in balance. The Heyokas, that's specific to the Lakota world, but in studying the idea of a contrary clown, that, that clown exists in over 155 different native cultures. That's interesting to me, that wherever civilization started to organize, this teacher about teacher of tolerance, teacher of accepting all kinds of people would, would evolve. So I was studying that, and this is the area where the Hayokas would have existed, right up through these high plains of Colorado and Wyoming into Montana. So coming to Laramie to work on it was a great opportunity. The Hayoka asks us to look backwards so that we can see where it is we're going. They call to us, Hokehe, live for the day. The second half of the title, Hokehe, uh, is also a Lakota word. It's actually a battle cry, uh, meaning today is a good day to die. And that's in our vernacular in contemporary society. It would translate essentially to go for it. Um, today's the day. Carpe diem, be your true self. So when I found those two words, heyoka and hokahe, I, I happened to put them together and they essentially reflect each other when you look at them. And I found that interesting because the Heyoka, the clown, 
One of their jobs was to mirror society and to show the opposite, to show the reverse. So when I put those two words together and they were mirroring each other, I thought, well, there's the title. I guess, in a sense, I have cast myself in my life as a Hayoka, in a sense. Uh, I am, part of it is the job that I have. I'm a solo performer, so I've spent a huge amount of time in my career for the past nearly 30 years being on the road, lots of times all by myself, traveling, traveling all over the United States. I've now performed in 50 states and across Europe. Generally, I'm doing my solo show and I'm the guy from somewhere else. I'm that guy from out of town. Now add to that the fact that I'm a mime, which is pretty unusual. That makes me a bit different. Uh, I'm also a gay man. I grew up as a gay kid in a little town in Montana in the 60s, long before Oprah. So that set me up for being a little bit separate, a little bit on an outside, outside the norm. Uh, I'm a pretty quiet person from a pretty big family. I'm from a big quiet place called Montana. So I've been attracted to how it is to not use words. So those things led me to feeling, in good ways and challenging ways, as a bit of an outsider. So my work as a writer and as a performer has reflected that. My work um, as a mime is certainly uh, inspired by and uh, connected to traditional pantomime in that I studied with Marcel Marceau who was kind of synonymous with the idea of what we know of as pantomime. So I'm certainly influenced by the tradition of illusion and silent storytelling. However, I guess where my work is different is, I, I don't, some reviewer called me once a postmodern mime. I'm not sure exactly what that means, except that I rarely wear white face. Uh, and uh, I take traditional illusory pantomime and investigate contemporary issues with it. So it's storytelling in a traditional sense, but using um, current events and issues that I think that are of interest to me in, um, in contemporary society. This is a really challenging project for me because, as I said, I've been a solo performer for the past number of years. Uh, and I'm now uh, in Laramie working with a cast of 18 people, including myself. Uh, it's certainly the biggest adventure I've had as a writer, certainly as a director, uh, to create a piece uh, with that large a cast. So, the project has been really challenging. We call it devising theater in that there is no script at the beginning. I, I showed up in Laramie with two Lakota words and a big box full of ideas. <laughs> there was no script when we started. It's actually a way of working backwards to create <coughs> theater. And interestingly, we're talking about a clown who is a backwards clown. That's our original inspiration. If the people are crying too much, <laughs> The Hayoka will last. <laughs> Part of the experience of rehearsing this play and creating this piece has been to ask people to bring in ideas on a daily basis, investigate a lot of different ways of seeing things, and then choose the way ultimately that serves the piece, which means you have to let go of ideas. You might have to let go of an idea that you have some ownership of. Uh, I know that's been true for me. Everyone's got a flip side. Everyone. The cast has been a huge part of how this project has come about. So a lot of my job has been really more than a director. It's more about thinking of what is the question to ask to get the cast to consider a certain, convert, uh, a certain discussion and then to think of exercises that can take that discussion up on its feet and turn it into something um, potentially theatrical. <laughs> I guess I'm a bit of a manipulator in that sense, is how do you begin a conversation that can then 
be distilled and translated into movement in theater. Intolerant.